Hello all, welcome back to another video. It has been a long time since I have posted and here it is, another video on bypassing the latest Windows Defender on a Windows 11 machine. This video will be showcasing Mimikatz and the Metapreter Reverse Shell Bypass. Without further ado, let's get started. We will be looking at a project that we have looked at previously before in this channel, the Fowler's PE Loader, which will allow us to remotely load a PE binary directly into memory. This video is posted on my channel about one year ago, and I am sure it no longer works now. Let's look at this Fowler's PE Loader project again and demonstrate how we can bypass Windows Defender. This is extremely useful because it is a generic loader. It means that you can use this loader and load a binary of your choice to bypass Windows Defender. Let's download the project first. You will need Visual Studio on your Windows machine to compile the Fowler's PE Loader from source code later. Upon extracting the project, we have a Windows Defender alert. This is expected because the GitHub repository contains the Mimikatz binary. We can ignore it. Now let's compile the project from source with Visual Studio and see what happens. Compilation is successful, and shortly after, we can see a Windows Defender alert popping out. Now, let's try to modify the source code to bypass Windows Defender. The first step that I personally like to perform is to open the folder with a text editor tool such as Sublime. Sublime will allow us to recursively search and replace strings which is very helpful to modify source code. In the solution SLN file, there are a few strings that we can change. Sometimes, Windows Defender will perform a signature match on the project unique identifiers. Let's change all of the IDs in the project recursively. Let's also change the name of the tool. Fowler's PE Loader to something like Hello World. We should also rename the files to match it. Let's change the file names to Hello World as well. Awesome, this looks good. Let's give it a try. This should not work so easily, but it will serve as a good starting point. Let's fire up Visual Studio again and compile it. As expected, Windows Defender is still detecting it. Let's continue to modify the source code with Visual Studio. The next step I like to perform is to change function names. I also like to change how the functions are being executed if it is easy to do so, such as removing the if conditions over here. We do not need error checking so this is fine. Another thing Windows Defender likes to perform signature checking on is the printf statements. Let's modify the decrypt AES function a little bit. Okay, it still didn't work. More work is needed. Let's continue modifying the source code. Now let's look at the main function first. Let's change and remove the printf statements in the main function now.
it is being detected as another malware name. Let's continue to modify the source code. We can also try to change the variable names. You can see on the screen that Windows Defender will repeatedly prompt me to submit the file for review because automatic submission is turned off. We can dismiss the prompt and ignore it. Another way we can modify the source is to add arguments that the program can accept and perform some kind of string checks to only execute if the argument supplied is expected. Let's give it a try. It didn't work this time round. Let's remove it. Let's try and remove some more printf statements. I am pretty sure some of them are being signatured by Windows Defender. We can also change the default process that the program creates, for example from notepad.exe over here to gpupdate.exe. Let's give it a try. I think we did it. We can execute the program now without Windows Defender shouting at us. Let's try it out with Mimikatz. Let's switch over to our Kali machine and git clone the project. We need the AES Python script and the Mimikatz binary to perform the AES encryption and it should generate the encrypted payload file and the key file for us. Alright, this looks good. Let's supply the arguments required for our program, our Kali IP address, port number, the encrypted file name and the key file name. Oh my god, we did it. We have successfully bypassed Windows Defender. Now we basically can use this folder's PE loader to remotely load any PE file of our choice and it should work. Let's give Metapreter Reverse Shell a try. Let's head back over to our Kali machine and generate a Metapreter Reverse Shell EXE payload and use the AES Python script to perform AES encryption on it. It should generate the cipher.bin file and the key.bin file for us. Now let's set up our listener to receive the incoming Metapreter Reverse Shell. Sweet, it worked. I hope you all have enjoyed the video. Please help to like the video, subscribe to the channel, as well as to share the video. It will really help out the channel a lot and it will be very encouraging for me to continue making new videos. Alright all, take care and stay safe. I will see you all soon in the next video. Bye!